don't get shit me, yeah. When the thump in the trunk, go bump, bump, bump. Hey, what's up, lawn care nuts? So today I'm going to tell you a story from my lawn care days when I worked for the big lawn care company called True Green. And uh, it's from when I was in Merrillville, Indiana as a senior operations manager, 2008-2009. Uh, but before we get into the story, I want to share a craft beer with you, and I am having a Dogfish 61. Dogfish 61. Dogfish is one of my favorite. Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, one of my favorites. There you go, Dogfish 61. This has got like some grape seed or something in it, grape musk. So it's got this really cool color, and I am drinking out of my figure eight brewing glass, figure eight brewing from Valparaiso, Indiana. So cheers with that one. If you're over 21, pop a craft. All right, so here's the story. I got a lot of great stories. Uh, but this is one of my favorites. So it stems around a customer that we had that would not believe us and how I convinced her. And it was all about her watering habits. Um, I'm bringing this up because I've just done a couple videos on watering your lawn. And I know that a few of you who we talk, there's a few of you that, that run small lawn care businesses and we talk through email and stuff. And uh, I give you guys advice and that's cool. I mean, I love doing that. I love helping you guys out. And uh, so this comes up, you know, that a lot of times your customers won't believe you when you tell them how to water the lawn. So this is exactly that. So it was with True Green, and I'm actually going to show you this lawn because I happened to be out uh, and about hanging out with some lawn care buddies of mine this week shooting some video, and we went by this lawn, so I stopped and did some filming there. So uh, before I show you the lawn, let me tell you what happened. So we had been treating this lawn for a while, and it's a very shaded lawn, and the, the lady was older. She doesn't live there anymore uh, from what I can tell, but she has an in-ground sprinkler system that she would run every single day. Uh, which again, that's a problem. I, I told you in the last video, you don't want to run your, your sprinklers or you don't want to irrigate every day. You want to water deep and then you want the lawn to dry out in between waterings. So anyway, this lady, she because she had this in-ground sprinkler system, she thought that that meant she had to water every day. And not just for 10 minutes per zone. She would water like two hours per zone every day. So you can imagine that this lawn was just like when you would step on it, right? And uh, so that was a problem and it caused further problems for her lawn because it caused the pH in the soil to sour. And anytime you have a lawn that's completely wet all the time, super shaded, and it's still hot and humid outside like it is in the summer, that's gonna cause all kinds of issues. It's gonna cause fungus issues, it's gonna cause the pH to be off, a lot of things. But what it was doing for her lawn, it was literally thinning the lawn out. It's bad enough that a lawn has to compete with uh, other trees and things like that that are above it, that are blocking its sunlight. But on top of that, when it's constantly wet, basically the roots just rot out um, and the lawn can die. Just imagine if you kept your feet, it's called wet feet, by the way. Uh, imagine if you kept your feet in water every single day for two hours. You know how they prune up? Well, it would get even worse. I mean, eventually your feet would just turn gangrene and rot off. That's called trench foot, by the way, for those of you ever in the military. That's what happens if your feet get wet for too long and they stay inside of combat boots and it's nice and hot, things grow in there and you get what's called trench foot. Same kind of thing. So I'm, you're getting the picture here, right? So this lady had called out pretty much everybody that ever worked with us and she was complaining that her lawn didn't look good. And you know, we had the documentation that every time my specialist was there, every time one of our managers went there, we told her, you're overwatering, you're overwatering. On top of that, she even had a neighbor next door that did his own, but he knew lawn care. He kind of knew how things worked. He did proper cultural practices. He did things the right way, and his lawn looked great. And he kept telling her the same thing. He was backing us up, saying, look, you're watering too much. You're overwatering. So long story short, she was just bitching, complaining, bitching, complaining. She wouldn't believe us. So I was the senior guy. So I went out to the lawn and I thought, you know, I can't go out and tell her the same thing everybody else is because she's just not going to believe me, right? You know, you can't just tell customers to F off, even though sometimes that's what you want to do. You can't, right? You're running a business. Um, and so what I ended up doing was I took a soil probe with me. Now, if you don't know what a soil probe is, it's an invaluable tool. And if you're in the lawn industry, you should always have a soil probe with you. There's a lot of things you can do with a soil probe, but mainly we use it to check. You can check thatch levels with it, but really I would just check to see what the soil moisture was. And so here's a picture of a soil probe right here. Um, and so basically what you do is you just jam it into the ground and, it pull, and you pull it up and then there's a core of soil that you can look at. It almost does the same thing that an aeration machine does except it does it with one plug. So I took that soil probe and I met the lady out there and it actually so happens that the neighbor that was on my side that agreed with us was also there. And so I'm talking to the lady and she's complaining, oh my lawn is horrible, you guys don't treat it right, you know, all this same crap that I know all of you guys hear. And I, I already had a plan, right? So I walked around the lawn 
And what I what I did was I acted like I was really paying attention. And I told her that I said, "Give me five minutes. Let me do an assessment here." And so I, I walked around the lawn, and I already knew what the problem was. I could feel it under my feet. I was like, pew, 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 when you step on it, right? But I knew that was the issue. But I, I knew that I had to tell her something different. So the first thing I did is I would get down on my knee in various places in the lawn, and I would get right up to the lawn like this, and I would go, <gasps> and I would make a face like that. So I knew she could see me, right? So I did that first. And of course, now this is something that no one else has done. You could call this like a pattern interrupt for her, right? Because she she's never seen anyone do this. So then I get back to where she's standing and I'm like, I'm like, I almost, I almost think I have this figured out. Just give me one more second, okay? And I took my soil probe out and I jammed it down to the ground and I pulled it up and I pulled the core of soil out. And right in front of her, I took it and I went, and I sniffed that core of soil and then I went, oh, Oh, and she's like, what? What is it? I'm like, oh, hold on. And I, act, I almost like doubled over. I'm like, oh, oh, hold on. Just give me a second. And I came up, right? My eyes are watering like they are right now. <laughs> and so, so then I'm holding it and I'm like, just give me one more second. And I took that core and I went, <laughs> like that. I actually shoved it in my mouth, took two chews on it and spit it out and did the same thing. And I'm like, oh. Like this, and so then I and I, I really over dramatized this. Is that a word, dramatized? <laughs> and so now she's looking at me, and the neighbor that agrees with me, that guy, he doesn't know what the hell to think. You know, he's, you know, whatever. So, so I find that guy, I compose myself, and then I look at her and I go, "Ma'am, your soil is so sour. I can't believe there's anything growing in this. This is the most sour soil I've ever tasted." And she's like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? I'm like, well, the first thing is we have got to stop watering this thing. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. This is bad. This is the, I, I've been doing this for 15 years. This is the worst I've ever tasted. The worst. And I've tasted literally thousands of lawns. This is just horrible. So please, you've got to stop watering. You've got to let this thing dry out. We've got to try to dry some of this stuff up. Or I'm afraid this is going to spread. I mean, I could see this really moving, moving into his lawn. And I point at the neighbor and it, I mean, I could see this going underneath the road and across the street to the other neighbor's homes. I mean, this is a bad, bad, sour condition. We have got to stop this now. Otherwise, I might have to call it in. And I froze. And I don't think she, she's like, okay. All right, and she walked me in the garage, and we, we turned her sprinkler system. We didn't shut it completely down. I set it to go one time per week for like 25, 35 minutes a zone, and that was it. Now, I followed up later, but she let me completely reset the sprinkler system. The other thing I did was I said, now I'm going to give you something that's going to help you. And I had some lime in the truck, and so I put down an application of lime. Lime will help soil conditioning to a degree. You have to do it for a long time and for a lot. But the other thing that comes with a lot of these people is they just want to see you put something down, right? If you put something down on the lawn, whether it helps or not, they think, oh, well, I got something. Oh, you did something. So I put lime down. But I, I told her as a condition of me putting that lime down, she had to let me run her sprinklers. And so long story short is I was able to convince this woman with utter BS, honestly, um, but she just wouldn't listen any other way. And I know that you guys that have lawn care businesses, that's what you deal with. You deal with people that they read some crap on the internet or their uncle used to do something with with his lawn in, in 1977 in Texas with the cows, right? Or they know a farmer. I got that one. I know farmers who tell me how to do lawn care. Really? Okay, so growing corn, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. It doesn't, it doesn't even equate. But you always get these weird things. So sometimes it takes a pattern interrupt. Sometimes it takes something so outlandish that people, honestly, there's no way this woman could have refuted that after I did that because what I did was so outrageous she would have just looked like an idiot if she tried to tried to go against me. And so just want to tell you that story. It worked. Um, I've been showing you, throughout this, I've been showing you the lawn. And again, I don't think she lives there anymore, but you can see definitely the, the conditions of it. Now, it's pretty much just a normal lawn. I have no idea what they're doing there. So anyways, I hope that's been entertaining for you at least. And those of you who own lawn care companies, you definitely know what I'm getting at. So I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut, and I will see you in the lawn.